This is the Bermuda Triangle. Located in a region in the western part of the North Atlantic Ocean is a piece of water which for some reason is the point where over hundreds of people have gone missing. This includes people in rafts, boats, planes, but why? What is the science behind this? Or is this just another conspiracy theory with no real answer? Hey guys, my name is Tuv, and in today's video, we'll be talking about the Bermuda Triangle, how it came to be, the countless disappearances, and the alleged reoccurrences. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. I want to give you guys some quick updates before we get into the actual topic. Let's talk about my upload schedule. I am supposed to be uploading once a week. That's how I've done it for years now. I upload once a week, but I've been missing out a little bit, so I'm sorry about that. But the good news is we are getting closer to the Moist Critical collab. Like I've said before, that is the third 1 million special. I am literally going to fly out to Florida and make a video with him at his warehouse. It's going to be so fun. By the time this video comes out, I would have already have a scheduled date to go to Florida. So while recording this video, my cameraman, which is going to Florida with me, just told me he tested positive for COVID. Another like two week delay. I just want to keep you guys in the loop. Literally got to wait for him to test negative. Everything's ready. Everything's ready now. I'm sorry. I know you guys have been waiting for this collaboration, but I promise when you see that video on your feed, it's going to go so bad. I'll keep updating you guys as time goes on. All right, back to the video. So my apologies for the lack of videos. I'm literally getting a lot of stuff done behind the scenes, like my music EP and the whole Earl brand. By the way, new song coming out soon. English, yes, I know. We're gonna do an English song. <laughs> Once again, in this video, there will be three hidden codes for 25% off on anything at EarlDoesn'tExist.com. So make sure to keep your eyes open. But yeah, today we're gonna be talking about the Bermuda Triangle. First, let's talk about its origins. The first ever mention of the Bermuda Triangle was in the early 1960s, with an article by a man named Vince Gaddis. The article was in a magazine by the name of Argosy, a Pulp Fiction dedicated read for apparently only men. <laughs> Vincent based his article on another fake magazine article by the name of Sea Mystery at Our Back Door. In this watery region of the coast of Florida, ships and aircraft vanish without leaving a single clue. He called it the Bermuda Triangle due to the areas connecting it, being just off the coast of Florida, Puerto Rico, and the British overseas territory Bermuda. The triangle is about 500,000 square miles in size. This fictional story caught on with other writers making their own stories for entertainment entertainment purposes. And the people were fascinated by this mystery, which is why it's sold. I also will mention that Christopher Columbus was the first person to even mention strange sightings here, even before it had a name. He reported that a great flame of fire crashed into the sea one night and that a strange light appeared in the distance a few weeks later. He also wrote about erratic compass readings. So yeah, this started off with some fiction and also some truth to it. 1960s authors creating interesting but not real stories. But there was an actual anecdote by Christopher Columbus. Now that we've got our origins explained, let's head over to the strange cases. So there have been over 30 Bermuda Triangle missing cases ranging from 1945 to as recent as 2020. This includes ships and airplanes, but I'm only going to cover the most significant ones. I actually did the math on the Bermuda Triangle Wikipedia page and oh my god, about 905 people have gone missing in total. In the Bermuda Triangle, each person, most likely with a family that was expecting them to come back, those families have to be like a super big Bermuda Triangle enthusiast after having their loved ones go missing over there. So let's begin with probably the most iconic Bermuda Triangle case, and that's December 5th, 1945, Flight 19. Flight 19 was a group of five General Motor torpedo bombers who disappeared while flying over the Bermuda Triangle. All 14 men on the aircraft were lost and never seen again. They were undertaking a navigation and combat training routine, a combination of bombing and navigation, which other flights had actually completed. The group consisted of a flight leader, Charles Taylor, who was a US Navy lieutenant, and the rest were trainee pilots. The trainee pilots had even completed other missions in the same exact area, so no one had any idea what to expect next. Before taking off, the planes were checked to make sure they had the maximum fuel, which they did, but all the planes had missing clocks, though that wasn't a concern to anyone because all the men had their own watches. Still kind of weird that all the planes just didn't have clocks. After takeoff, they flew east until they reached a reef where the low-level bombing practice was carried out. After that, they turned north for a second flight, and that's when trouble started. Radio conversations between the pilots were overheard by another base and other aircraft in the area. And we know for sure that the bombing mission was completed because a trainee requested and was given permission to drop the last bomb. Lieutenant Robert F. Cox, who was forming up with his group of students for the same mission, received an unidentified transmission. Can't see land. Looks like we got off track. Where do you stand? We cannot confirm where we are. Both of my compasses are out. Contact was lost for 10 minutes. We couldn't find West. Everything is wrong. We can't be sure of any direction. Everything looks strange, even the ocean. We didn't know where we were. Everyone couldn't see anything. We thought we might be about 225 miles northeast of the base. And that was the last 
anyone heard of Flight 19? Of course, there's a lot more details in this story, but uh, I'm only giving you guys the main points of each of the stories I'm going to tell you. Within minutes, tower personnel dispatched two BPM rescue planes carrying equipment. They headed to the final estimated position of Flight 19, however, only one ended up returning. Yeah. One of the rescue planes got lost as well. The tanker of the SS Jane's Mill reported to have seen flames from an apparent explosion reaching 100 feet in the air, so the loss of that specific plane was attributed to an explosion. But still, the six planes, one of which was a rescue plane, were still gone. For five days, Coast Guard, Navy, and Naval Aviation personnel searched in more than 250,000 square miles of Atlantic and Gulf waters, but none were found. Aircraft wrecks, shipwrecks, lifeboats, or the remains of the flights don't exist. The Navy then conducted an investigation about the situation, but nothing was found. A total of 14 people went missing as a result of the tragedy, <laughs> and 13 others also went missing trying to rescue them. Very, very strange story to this day with no real explanation. I did find an interesting article article from 2015 claiming that in the mid 1960s <laughs> that's how my sneeze sounds by the way in case anyone was wondering that's there you go <laughs> a wrecked warplane with two bodies was retrieved by the navy in florida the navy initially said the bodies were from flight 19 and then quickly retracted their statement yeah they also didn't want to give out the names of these dead people even if they wanted to they can't identify the bodies flight 19 is the most popular the most talked about when it comes to the Bermuda Triangle. I do recommend some documentaries about it. I'll leave some links in the description, the ones I watched. But yeah, let's continue with the next one. July 24th, 2015. Perry Cohen and Austin Stefanos. Perry Cohen, born January 30th, 2001, and Austin Stefanos, born December 1st, 2000, were two 14-year-old friends who vanished during a fishing trip on July 24th, 2015 in Tequesta, Florida. Cohen and Stefanos were avid fishers and would go fishing at an area not far from offshore. The two boys would routinely check in with their parents every couple of hours. Stefanos' grandfather told reporters that his grandson had operated the boat about 20 times and that family members were comfortable with him operating the boat. About a week prior to the boys' disappearance, Stefanos had stopped by a Marine Patrol officer for a routine check and all safety equipment mandated by Florida law was aboard the boat. On July 23rd, 2015, Cohen sent a message to another friend through Instagram DMs that read, Me and Austin are crossing to the Bahamas tomorrow. Come with us. We wouldn't check in. Another friend reportedly spoke to Stefanos about traveling, and Stefanos ended up saying that the weather was too rough. And Cohen reportedly asked his stepfather that night if he could borrow his GPS to use for Stefanos' boat. And so the night prior to their disappearance, they both spent the night together at Stefanos' house. On the morning of July 24th, 2015, Cohen and Stefanos traveled to the Jupiter Island Marine Arena to go fishing on a 1978 sea craft that was registered to Stefano's mother. They were lasting at the Jib Yacht Club and Marina where they spent $100 on gas and Stefano's texted his parents around 11.25 a.m and they left the marina sometime before noon. Shortly after they left, a line of thunderstorms were documented moving towards their area, and the National Weather Service issued a special marine warning that warned of heavy rain and winds up to 40 miles per hour. So some believe that uh, the teens were taken by the storm, and Stefano's last post on social media was on Snapchat, and that was the boys on the boat with a caption, peace out, jupe, which some friends claim meant them going to the Bahamas. A friend of theirs actually told reporters that there was another video from Stefano's Snapchat account with a storm coming towards them and the caption saying we're fucked I, I know they're just kids i know they're just kids but i feel like why would you record that and why not just like try to leave due to the gigantic sea area multiple boats and aircraft were used to find the missing boys and apparently the search was extremely difficult because the boat didn't have an emergency beacon or any other safety equipment including that of a gps which is really odd because like i said before the boat did pass the routine check and cohen even asked his stepdad for a gps however the boat that they were operating was found on july 26th of that same year Year. It was found near Daytona Beach in Florida. Though the Coast Guards didn't collect the boat, they actually attached a data marker on it and they just let it sit. And the boat was rediscovered on March 18th, 2016. Shout out all my fellow March 18th birthday people. It's my birthday. You guys don't care. <laughs> but an iPhone and other personal objects were found on the boat. This was in 2016 when the boat was refound, but the search was canceled only a week after the boys went missing. I genuinely wonder what happens to the people that go missing. Are they just in an alternate universe where they think everything's normal? Are they in the back rooms? Like, what's going on? <laughs> Let's head on to the last one. If you guys are enjoying the video, please don't mind clicking that like button. And if you're not already, it would be super dope if you could subscribe. I upload a bunch of morbid videos and there's a playlist right there at the top right in case you want to binge my channel. Yeah, let's get back to the video. March of 1918, USS Cyclops. All credit to history.com because that's where I got all my information for this section. The Cyclops was nearly 550 feet long with a crew of 306 people and around 11,000 tons of manganese aboard. She had been sailing successfully since 1910, traveling between the Baltic Sea, the Caribbean, and Mexico, and assisting with moving 
moving coal around the world and helping refugees. But in 1917, when America entered World War I, Cyclops became a key naval asset, transporting troops and coal to fuel other ships all over the world. In March of 1918, the ship was given a new cargo, tons and tons of dense manganese ore, used in steel making. She left Brazil loaded up with the brittle metal, then voyaged to Barbados to resupply for the long journey home to Baltimore. The last known message from the ship said simply, weather fair, all well. But on the nine day journey, something went wrong and no one from the ship was ever seen or heard from again. In a feature published a couple years after the ship's disappearance, Santa Fe magazine described the strangeness of the disappearance. Usually a wooden bucket or a cork life preserver identified as belonging to a lost ship is picked up after a wreck, but not so with the Cyclops. She just disappeared as though some gigantic monster of the sea had grabbed her, men and all, and sent her to the depths of the ocean. And the suddenness of her destruction is amplified by the absence of any wireless calls for help being picked up by any ship along the route. At the time, people wondered if the ship was a victim of an attack by a German submarine. It was barely a year into the war and the Cyclops would have been a strategic target for them. Others have pointed fingers at the captain, George W. Worley. Months earlier, some members of the crew claimed Worley was a drunk, unsuitable to steer a ship, but the Navy defended Worley from these charges and he returned to his command. Yeah, even if the dude was drunk, there's, <laughs> are you gonna drunk steer a boat? You guys know, um, you guys know how DUI is a thing? BUIs are a thing. Like boating under the influence. I did not know that. That was that was interesting. I found it like a couple weeks ago. I put on my Instagram story. By the way, follow me on Instagram. Yeah, even if the dude was drunk, what is he, what is he gonna do? Steer downwards into the depths of hell? Like, no. The US Navy actually has an official statement about the Cyclops. The disappearance of the ship has been one of the most baffling mysteries in the annals of the Navy. All attempts to locate her have proved unsuccessful. It's kind of odd telling these stories without them having resolutions. Because usually when we tell stories, we're like, this is what happened and you know, that's how it ended. But like with these, like, where the fuck are they? You know, you guys got to wait until the end when we talk about the Bermuda Triangle theories. There's a, uh, there's some interesting ones. Stay tuned. December 28th, 2020. 29 foot blue and white Mako Cuddy cabin vessel. The reason I'm including this in the list is because it's the most recent case, which is 2020. But I'm going to say this one quick because you guys are getting the gist of these stories. You know, everyone goes missing. <laughs> Not like it's a spoiler alert. But in 2020, a Florida bound boat with 20 people in it went missing. After searching for about 84 hours and more than 17,000 square miles, rescuers eventually suspended their search. Captain Stefan V. Burdian said in a statement, our thoughts and prayers go out to the families of the missing people. I encourage anyone with information about the people abroad to contact us as soon as possible. And that was just 84 hours after realizing, oh, they disappeared. Let's just uh, stop searching. I mean, I don't blame them. What the fuck else are, gonna, are they going to do is the Bermuda Triangle? But it's kind of sad how the families of these people will just never have an explanation as to what happened. Theories. Credit to 38.com for these, by the way. Methane gas. Some people like to believe that methane gas is the reason for all these ships and planes going missing. It's been proven that sizable amounts of methane gas exist in some spots in the ocean floor. Some experts believe that if that gas were released into the water, it could sink ships and even cause planes to crash. And it could happen pretty fast, like just a few seconds. So much so that it wouldn't allow those people that are being sucked in to make a phone call. Not a phone call, but you know, like <laughs> contact help. Wormhole. It's just a wormhole. Um. You know, those, I guess those things that let you time travel that haven't been proven to be real. Uh, some people think that Bermuda Triangle, anyone that goes missing, they actually, I mean, yeah, they did go missing, but they just time travel to another time period or another dimension. Water spouts. Water spouts, which are basically like a tornado in the ocean, have been seen in the Bermuda Triangle. During this, water from the ocean is sucked hundreds or thousands of feet into the air. In addition to water spouts, parts of the Gulf Stream moves along the edge of the Bermuda Triangle, which can lead to high waves which could easily capsize boats. These waves hit with absolutely no warning at all and could be hundreds of feet high. Waves of this height would even be able to knock out planes that were flying closer to the water. Aliens. Honestly, um, if I had to believe any of these theories, I'm gonna go with aliens. I gotta go with aliens, bruh. The Bermuda Triangle could be the true center of the Earth, and it's a perfect place to snatch unsuspecting travelers. And there's no cameras there, right? But <laughs> why did I say that? Why did I say there's no cameras? Of course there's no cameras there. But it's seriously so fucking weird. With Flight 19, everything going missing, with certain boats with just humans that go missing, but not the boat itself, it's really odd. And hey, maybe it could be aliens picking people. Taking full-on planes, I don't know. We'll never know. This is a mystery. I don't know if we'll ever find out, but it is extremely interesting. Let me know what you guys think about the Bermuda Triangle down in the comments below. And I promise I'm going to be uploading at a faster speed for you guys. I promise it sucks being gone, doing business stuff. Ew, business. Ew, what the fuck is that? I just want to come back home and make my videos. If you guys liked the video, make sure to leave a like. And thank you guys so much for 100,000 subscribers on my second channel. Seriously, uh... 
bad. That's fucking awesome. And a new song coming soon. If you guys like morbid videos, make sure to watch that playlist right there. I mean, is that the right? And if you guys like morbid videos, make sure to click that playlist right there and just binge watch my channel. And I'll see you guys next time I upload.